and now the Alley Point Environmental Center is the premier environmental education resource in the entire state of New York. Whatever I do, it's a great place, and I've been there in the first place. What the heck? And I can give you story after story of a similar nature. And so I feel very, very lucky. And then I happen to come on the scene at a time where all these things need doing. And there were people in place willing to do everything necessary to support us in achieving those results. There have been a number of governors, a number of mayors, during my 38 years, getting with Governor Rockefeller, Governor Wilson, Governor Carey, Governor Kumo, Governor Pataki, and Governor Patterson. Quite a nice individual, by the way. He sat in front of me for 20 years in the state senate. We got to know each other. But during all of those years, with all of those people in office, there were many, many landmark issues that had to be dealt with. And again, in the early 70s, the city was in a terrible fiscal crisis required some tough decisions. Tremendous measures that had to be taken by many people, including governor, legislature, and the city of New York itself. And we were part of it. The New York Times said we were seven Republican senators representing the city of New York at that time. The New York Times called us the seven rocks of granite. Some other people called us the seven dwarfs. <laughs> but we did the right thing and we got it done. And you heard Clara Schumann earlier, who was one of my most distinguished constituents. With the Bayside and then the White Stone. Now she had a war room in her office dealing with a very, very critical issue of schools and the lack of them in terms of overcrowding. And she was doing everything she could expand, to get money, to do what, you know, what had to be done to solve that problem. And I came up with the idea, because I learned about it, that there might be some land over at Creedmoor, 32 acres, that we could get our hands on. It's a long story, but what it ended up with, we built two elementary schools and a high school. And it started in her office, because she had a meeting with the chancellor at the time, Chancellor Crew. And at that meeting, I said to him, listen, I think we can get our hands on this land and build some schools. When you think about it, he took a look at it, had his people go take a look at it, and it evolved. But along the way, there were some problems. There was a community around there who was, at some point in time, rather concerned about the impact of 3,000 children running around the world and what it would do. And we were in the middle of a campaign, and my opponent, who I will not mention, went around handing the flyers out in that community, flaming this lack of, of conviction and trying to incite people to think it's the wrong thing to do. So I called up Claire Schultz. You may not remember this. And I said, so-and-so is handing out a flyer in Glen Oaks telling people that these two elementary schools and high school would be the wrong thing to do. You know what she said? She said, I'm going to call that guy up, cut his balls off if he doesn't stop. <laughs> you may not remember it, but I do, because it had its impact. So again, I repeat what I started off by saying. There's so many people involved in so many issues, whether they're organizations, volunteering groups, charitable organizations, environmental groups, education groups, other elected officials like Claire, and on and on the list goes that we, we were able to interface with and accomplish hopefully a great deal that will stand the test of time. Over Bayside, uh, we have that beautiful offices club. And again, I have to refer to Claire because in addition to restoring the offices club with great millions of dollars it took to do that, 
But the old fort itself had been shut down for decades. I knew that because there had been a sign there on the military. And you couldn't get in to see that old fort because it was unsafe. And her and I worked together. She got a half a million. I got a half a million. We hired a consultant. They developed plans. They opened it up. They restored it to the extent of making it safe. Now there's a visitor center. And every week, park rangers take people on tours of the old fort. There it is. Another tribute to people working together to get things done. Someone wrote me a letter the other day, and I've gotten hundreds of letters. Telephone calls and emails. And the essence of the letter was, remember the phrase, Northeast Queens would not be what it is today if you not been in office. But, my response is that it would not be what it is today if all those institutions and individuals dedicated leaders in their community from planning boards and civic associations and, and borough, borough presidents and others were not committed to see that it would end. And so it was a marriage of circumstance, serendipity, and just the right time for all these things to happen. Uh, you heard the he talked long talk about the conservative party and our relationship. The only problem I ever had with Tom was when I raised the drinking age of 21. <laughs> Mike, Mike and Tom had a lick to start <laughs> We saved a lot of lives doing that. When he, uh, Richard, D, come on up here, please, if you don't mind. When he uh, came to me uh, a while back and said she wanted to throw this little party, I said, absolutely not. Why do you want to impose on a lot of nice people to come together, particularly this time of the year? And I said, I really don't want you to do that. Well, how many of you know Dee well? You don't tell me not to do something. Because if you tell her not to do something, you can bet your life that's exactly what she's going to do. <laughs> but in any event, yeah, I want to thank you so very much.